Hey, y'all. Today, I'm going to be doing a lot of my southern favorites. I'm recreating a childhood favorite with my barbecue pork sandwich and the best corn fritters you ever put in your mouth and traditional southern deviled eggs. And then it's Kari's Kentucky Pie. So grab your sweet tea and get ready to enjoy my southern favorites. We're gonna start with a simple barbecue pork sandwich. I'm gonna start with a four pound shoulder pork roast. And we're gonna make a dry rub. And our dry rub consists of two tablespoons of salt. Now I'm gonna use two tablespoons of dark brown sugar. Now that's dark brown, not the light brown. The dark brown sugar's had the molasses left in it. All right, now our next ingredient to go in our bowl is two tablespoons of black pepper. You know, this is gonna have a little kick to it, but sometimes we like to be kicked down here in the South. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? The next ingredient is paprika. I'm gonna put in two tablespoons, and I'm just gonna eyeball that. And I'm gonna use a half a tablespoon of garlic powder. And then the last thing I'm putting in is cayenne pepper. And I'm gonna add about a half a tablespoon. Now you can add to or back off of that. So that's it. Just that few ingredients does it take to make a fabulous dry rub. All right, I'm gonna bring my meat over here. And I'm gonna just very liberally sprinkle him with this dry rub. I'm not gonna let this hand touch the pork because I'm not gonna use all of this rub today. I wanna save it for the next time I'm needing a dry rub. Now, all we're gonna do is just cover him up with a plastic wrap, pop him in the fridge, and we're gonna let him marinate for about two hours. All right, so let's pop him in, and I'm gonna have to stop at the sink and wash my hands because, you know, I got all that cayenne pepper on me, so I sure don't wanna accidentally put my hands to my nose or my mouth. So you'll wanna make sure all that cayenne is gone from your hands. All right, now while we're waiting on our shoulder to marinate, I wanna show you how to put together a corn fritter. I'm gonna start by cracking two eggs. And I'm gonna add one cup of milk. Just kind of beat those together. All right, I've got a 15.25 ounce can of corn. I'm just gonna let it be draining while we're mixing together our dry ingredients. Our dry ingredients are one and a fourth cup of self-rising cornmeal mix. It's got all your leavenings in it, plus it's got some flour in it. So one and a fourth cup of self-rising cornmeal mix. Now we're gonna add all-purpose flour. And I am gonna add a cup and a fourth also. All right, now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to measure out a fourth of a cup of sugar and a teaspoon of salt. All right, so our corn has drained nicely. So in goes our corn. Now I'm just going to beat in my milk and eggs. All right, there we go. And the last thing that's gonna go in is four tablespoons of melted butter. So there we go. All right, now come on over here and I wanna show you my deep fryer. Now I've set our grease on 325 degrees. I don't want my grease to be so hot that my fritters are gonna get too brown on the outside and still raw on the inside. So I don't want my grease too hot. 
Now over here I have a cup of water and you'll find that if you'll dip your spoon in water and then dip into your batter, that it'll come off of your spoon without you even having to touch the batter. So just that easy. We're gonna let these fry for about three minutes. All right, so the main thing you'll wanna remember now, y'all, is to flip your fritter before it gets too brown on one side because it'll get heavy with the grease and then it won't wanna flip. It'll be one-sided on you. I just can't tell y'all how much I've enjoyed this deep fryer. Would you believe this is where I cook my bacon? Guilty! <laughs> All right. So there we are. We've got our corn fritters. I've mixed up a little sauce back here. Roasted red pepper and mayonnaise. Doesn't that look yummy? Wouldn't some fresh jalapenos diced up be good in there? Mmm. Oh my goodness. They're so good, y'all. Mmm. Guess what's coming up in this kitchen next? The devil's gonna try to come in my kitchen. But that devil is coming in the form of a southern deviled egg. And we're gonna finish up that yummy pork roast sandwich. And later, it's my niece Kari's Kentucky pie. I so hope y'all are enjoying the show. And if you do, be sure to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you'll never miss a video. And we'll be right back after the break. Hey, y'all, welcome back. I'm so glad y'all have joined me in the kitchen today, and I hope that you're enjoying the recipes that I'm preparing for y'all. In case you've just tuned in, I mixed up a dry rub, and I took a four-pound pork shoulder roast, and I rubbed him good with that dry rub. We put him in the refrigerator and let him marinate for two hours. Now I'm gonna make us a delicious pulled pork roast sandwich. I'm gonna add two cups of apple juice, or you can use apple cider. Now I'm gonna pour in one cup of apple cider vinegar. And the next ingredient is Worcestershire sauce. Now I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of the Worcestershire. And now I'm gonna add one tablespoon of liquid smoke. And this is gonna come out resembling barbecue pork roast that you would cook out on the grill because we've got our liquid smoke here and we've got our apple juice giving it like an apple woodsy taste. And I'm gonna cook it until it just pulls apart. All right, so a quick stir on our wet ingredients. I'm gonna just sit our roast down in our pot. Now I'm gonna cover him with tin foil. I've got my oven, y'all, preheated to 325 degrees, which is kind of a slower heat. Now I'm gonna put the lid on him, fasten him down real good, now I'm gonna put him into our preheated oven and I'm gonna let our pork roast cook for four hours. Oh, and this is so heavy. Oh, that's like a workout. All right, now let me step down here and wash my hands because I've been touching that pork. And then we're gonna move on to another food that we just love down here. And that's a southern deviled egg. You know, I can't stand a skimpy deviled egg. So to ensure that I always have plenty of filling, I boil me off one extra egg. And then I take that egg and I mash him up 
and I just mash him as fine as I can get him using a fork so that no one will see the white in our deviled eggs. All right. Now I'm just gonna take my other six eggs, slice them. Look at that. I lucked up with that one. The whole yolk just came right out, leaving me a nice clean shell. All right, maybe we'll get lucky again. Well, we got half lucky. <laughs> half of it came out. All right, so we're just gonna pop him out. All right, we've got all our yolks out now. Got our whites all lined up. So I'm just gonna mash those yolks up. All right. Now I'm just gonna start adding dried black pepper. A little salt. And I'm gonna add a fourth of a cup of mayonnaise. For the tartness, I'm gonna use a sweet relish and I'm gonna put in about one and a half tablespoons. But I'm gonna make sure that I squeeze off all that moisture because I don't want that extra wetness in my filling. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna add one teaspoon of prepared yellow mustard. All right. Our filling is mixed together. Using a spoon, I'm gonna just stuff the filling back into the cavity, just like that. All right, and look at there. Is that like just perfect? The green color of the dried split peas is beautiful with the egg, and that's gonna keep our eggs from rolling all around and making a big mess when I go to walk with these to the table. Very pretty. Now I'm gonna sprinkle them with just a little Paprika, it makes them pretty. Now I'm gonna come in here, I've got some diced pimento because the red color makes them so pretty. And if a few drop on the peas, that is quite all right. Aren't they beautiful? Mmm, there's nothing like it. Coming up, Kari's Kentucky Pie. I hope y'all are enjoying the show, and I want to hear from you. Tell me what recipes or videos you'd like to see me make by just leaving a short comment below. Now, let's get back to the show, y'all. All hey, y'all, now, I, I just took our pork shoulder roast out of the oven. Oh gosh, let's bring it around here. And let's unveil this bad boy and see what we've got. Look how good that does look. It smells like it's been cooking outside on that grill. Mmm. Mmm. What flavor it does have. Well, come on down here, y'all, because I can't let the day end without us making a dessert. Now, I've got a 12-ounce package of semi-sweet chocolate morsels that I melted in the microwave. So we're gonna put these in a larger bowl. This is one of the pies served in Louisville, Kentucky on Derby Day. And I can understand why. 
This is one of their favorites. Oh, too bad. I think this is going to require a finger licking. <laughs> mm. Oh, that chocolate is so good. All right, now I'm going to crack four eggs and just dump them in there with my chocolate. Just like that. Now I'm going to put in two cups of sugar. And this recipe is going to make two pies, which is great. I'll have plenty for everybody. Now I'm just going to mix together our ingredients. All right, now I'm going to add one cup of melted butter. All right, now I'm going to add a cup of sifted self-rising flour. There we go. So this pie mixes together very, very quickly, y'all. All right. Now I'm going to toss in a couple of teaspoons of vanilla flavoring. going to beat that in. All right. So we got our pie mixed together. Now I'm just going to stir in our two cups of chopped pecans. So in we go. And we're just going to stir those nuts into our pie batter. So I'm just going to divide this batter now among my pie shells. Now I'm using two frozen shells. How great do these look? All right. Into the oven, our pies go. We're gonna let it bake on 350 for anywhere from 50 to 60 minutes. And when we come back, y'all, and we're gonna make a delicious pulled pork barbecue sandwich. I so hope y'all are enjoying the show. And if you do, be sure to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you'll never miss a video. And we'll be right back after the break. Hey y'all, I got our pork up here now and it's cooled enough for me to get in here and pull it. I love me some pulled pork. I'm gonna put me some mayonnaise on my bread. I'm gonna pile my pork up onto one side of my bread. Now, I'm going to put just a little barbecue sauce. And I'm going to put just a little coleslaw on mine. A little black pepper. And we have got us, y'all, a fine... Oops, I'm going to add a little bit more mayonnaise. Soak it into the bread. We have got us a fine two-fisted pulled barbecue pork sandwich. And it's pretty good, y'all, with a pickle, too. But I'll get me some pickles later. I'm going to take my sandwich, and I'm going to come down here because I want y'all to see these Kentucky pies. Now, these are cooled. I got one poofy pie and one on the skimpy side. So I have to tell you what I'm going to do with the skimpier pie. I'm gonna put it in the back and I'm gonna cut this poofy pie. Oh, excuse me, Bodine. <laughs> All right. 
Remember that trick I taught y'all about snipping through the tin foil? Well, I'm just gonna be able to do that with my knife. Pull that down and come in here and get my piece. Now, over here on our plate, I'm gonna place my pie. I've also got ice cream here, y'all. Bodine just said ice cream, that settles it. All right. Ice cream it is, Bodine. Personally, I don't see anything wrong with a little whipped cream either. On with our whipped cream. And always, always your vegetables. Doesn't that look good? All right, y'all. Mmm. You just want to eat this among friends because it can get kind of messy. All right, let's come in here. Hey, y'all, it's Paula Dean. Now, if y'all enjoyed this week's full episode Friday, be sure to like it and click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be alerted when I post a video. Love and best dishes, friends. <laughs>